just knew I had three options, kill myself, turn myself in, or run. I think they caught him so off guard that he didn't have any idea what was about to happen to him. What do you think about when you're out strolling like this? I think about freedom's only 300 yards that way. We're sitting there waiting with the guns ready to shoot. They shot him right in the face. Not the life you want to live, I'll tell you that. This ain't for nobody. The opportunity to get rid of Phil was brought up. I thought that all my problems would go. Prison is definitely not, it's definitely not a good influence. The shocking slaying of Philip Danner was carried out by Colt Lundy, who was just a teen. Today, we'll dive into the rare footage of Lundy describing his life in prison. Life Behind Bars Colt Lundy's life had been confined to an 8x10 cell since he was 15 years old, serving a 25-year sentence in adult prison. His daily routine was filled with excursions to the chow hall, recreation, his job in the prison library, and occasional visits from family members in the visitor center. Plan a murder plot in the park one day is very bizarre, but it is actually what happened. Oh, uh, you're hit. Hey, girl. <laughs> she opened it. We're sitting there waiting with the guns ready to shoot. They shot him right in the face. These walks provided a brief moment of respite from the confines of his cramped cell, but they were also a reminder of the world outside, the world he could no longer be a part of. For Colt, the most significant moments of his day came in the early morning, when he had the chance to glimpse the night sky. His cell's window was a narrow slit that limited his view to a few degrees of sky, but he cherished those moments, hoping to see the moon, which would bring him a sense of freedom and liberation that he could not find anywhere else. It had been a long while since Colt last had the chance to gaze at the night sky with his own eyes, a long while since he and two other boys stole a car and drove off into the night. They were all underage, but that didn't matter to the law. When they were caught, the lifeless body of a man lay on the floor, and the law came down hard on the three boys. Colt and his fellow perpetrator were sentenced to 25 years in adult prison. The other boy, Paul Henry Gingerich, was only 12 at the time, the youngest child ever to be sentenced as an adult in Indiana. At the same time, you take a shower because somebody might try to run in your room. Take your stuff. Not the life you want to live. I'll tell you that. It's ain't for nobody. 15-year-old Colt Lundy and 12-year-old Paul Gingrich are both charged with murder in adult court. Although he was smaller than Colt, corrections officials assigned Paul to a juvenile prison with educational opportunities and monthly birthday parties. But Colt was sent to Wabash, a maximum security prison with the worst criminals in the state. Colt's story became a case study of two boys who committed the same crime but were sentenced differently. He and his cellmate were the youngest kids in the cell block, living in 8x10 cells in a place that was never designed for children. Colt was trapped in a world of criminals and harsh conditions, his youth stolen away from him. They treat you like dogs, they feed you like dogs, they tell you what to do all the time. <laughs> opportunity to get rid of Phil was brought up. I thought that all my problems would go. Got yeah, no freedom in here whatsoever. Whatsoever. And when you're in the shower, your door's open, so you don't, you gotta watch your door. You feel that you needed to get rid of him. When you take someone's life, you should not have a life. Prison of his own making. In Colt's eyes, Phil Danner was both a hero and a villain. He was the man who had taught him how to fish, how to ride a dirt bike, and how to shoot a pellet gun. But he was also the man who terrorized him, who cursed at him, and who threw him around the living room. The man who made home a place to escape from, not a place to return to. The man who Colt wanted to slay. Colt's mother Robin did nothing to stop Phil's torture. She was too weak to stand up to him, too afraid to leave him. And so Colt was left alone to face his tormentor. He tried to reason with his mother to make her see the damage that Phil was doing but she refused to listen, and so Colt made a vow to himself. If Phil ever hurt him again, he would slay him. Early this morning, Kosciuszko sheriffs found 49-year-old Philip Danner dead in his kitchen. There was a murder that took place here, and I was informed that there was. We had coins we needed, we wanted cash. So that's what aroused suspicion. Yep, he's dead, laying on the kitchen floor. He told me that they shot him right in the face. Now, as Colt sits in his cell, he thinks back on his life and wonders how things went so wrong. He thinks about his mother, about Phil, about his friends, and about the dream that was never realized. He wonders what might have been, what could have been, and what should have been. And as he dreams of California, he wonders if he will ever be free to go there. 
if he will ever be able to leave the past behind and start again, if he will ever be able to escape the pain and the memories that haunt him, and he wonders if he will ever be able to forgive Phil for all the things he did and all the things he didn't do. That there were three young boys wandering the store with a giant jar of change. Chase had told him that the gun that's in the car was used to kill Philip. Last evening, a 15-year-old boy is suspected of fatally shooting his stepfather and then driving several hours to Peru, Illinois. I just knew I had three options, kill myself, turn myself in, or run. And that Colt and Paul had just killed Philip and they were running away. They searched us and they put us in the cop car. A model prisoner. Colt Lundy had dreamed of California of wide open spaces, sandy beaches, and a fresh start. But instead, he found himself in Wabash. Me and Paul were sitting there. They were sitting there waiting with the guns ready to shoot when Phil come around the corner. He didn't say anything, he just rounded the corner. I think they caught him so off guard that he didn't have any idea what was about to happen to him. We both shot twice, and that's the end of it. A sprawling prison hundreds of miles from his hometown. The high electrified fences topped with razor wire were a stark reminder that this was no ordinary facility. The prisoners here were the worst of the worst, convicted of the most heinous crimes imaginable. Inside the prison, life was a constant struggle for survival. Guards carried tear gas ready to quell any hint of unrest. Weapons teams stood at the ready, prepared to mobilize at a moment's notice if a riot broke out. Privacy was a luxury that few could afford. Shower stalls lacked any semblance of privacy, and even using the shared toilet required hanging a sheet for modesty's sake. A strip search that included a cavity check was required before he could see his father, Carlos Lundy. But despite the harsh conditions, Colt had managed to keep his head down and stay out of trouble. He earned his GED and took college correspondence courses. He made quilts for the homeless and read about Eastern philosophies. He even ate a vegan diet and grew his hair long so he could donate it to Locks of Love, which made wigs for cancer patients. Colt was a model prisoner and the officials at Wabash recognized it. The prison's juvenile wing was supposed to be a buffer from the older, more violent prisoners, but to Colt, it looked like a warehouse for troubled kids. The emotional outbursts were wild, random, and violent. When Phil walked through the door, I shot, Paul shot, I shot, Paul shot. Why, why did you crawl through that window? What were you thinking? Knowing a, what, a lot of the details that did happen. Through the kitchen doorway. And that's when there was no, no turning back. Fights broke out daily, and it was too much for Colt to bear. Colt's dream of California and freedom was still alive, but it seemed farther away than ever before. Would he ever make it out of Wabash, or would he be doomed to spend the rest of his life behind those high electrified fences, forever a prisoner? From prisoner to champion. Colt Lundy had hit rock bottom, serving time in Wabash prison for a heinous crime he committed as a kid. But as he navigated life in the juvenile wing, he could only begin to wonder what awaited him in the general population. Fueled by a desire to protect himself, he went to prison when he was 15 years old. Colt Lundy admitted to shooting and killing his stepfather in 2010. Environment where I'm constantly around, you know, books and things that will help me. What do you think about when you're out strolling like this? Think about freedom's only 300 yards that way. He would start to exercise and train with his cellmate, who showed him the ropes of prison life. But Lundy's aspirations wouldn't stop at surviving prison. He would later find a book that would change his life, Convict Conditioning, which taught him how to train using only his body weight as resistance. Lundy embraced the program, honing his skills and pushing his body to the limits. After serving his time, Lundy had a new goal, to become the fittest man on earth, competing in the CrossFit Games and using the prize money to start his own business as a personal trainer in California. It was a far cry from his past, but Lundy was determined to make it happen. While he was in prison for God knows how long, goes to show the human spirit is a crazy thing. With it, one can truly overcome even the most dire of circumstances. One of Colt's new passions is exercise. When he gets out of prison, he hopes to go to California to compete in a CrossFit competition. At the same time, it's made me you know, who I am today, and that's better than I ever would have been. Prison is definitely not, it's definitely not a good influence. Remorse and regret. Colt Lundy and Paul Gingerich were just kids when they committed a heinous crime. They pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit slaying and were sentenced as adults to 25 years in prison. 
it was a deal that seemed less risky than facing a trial for slaying and the potential of a longer sentence. They were told that with good behavior, they might be out in their mid to late 20s. But Let's just say I'm proud of him being able to do that. Having a busy day? Yeah. <laughs> this is his stuff, right? I'm get used to wearing jumpsuits again. I can feel <laughs> gravitational knowledge attributed to this moment. Well, yesterday, uh, I kind of figured I was leaving. Is it pretty extraordinary from your experience to have a boy who came in here at, what, age 15? He's now 20. But soon after their sentencing, an uproar ensued over Gingerich's case. Bloggers rallied for him, and juvenile justice advocates filed briefs and clamored for reform. They argued that a boy so young didn't have the mental capacity to make the right decisions, and therefore should not be punished so harshly. The reformers won a new law, Paul's Law, which gave judges more flexibility in sentencing. Gingerich won an appeal and a right to a retrial. He pleaded guilty again, but this time under the new law. He now stands a chance of going free by age 18. However, Lundy was too old to benefit from Paul's law. He has no lawyer, no plans to appeal. Lundy accepts his fate and doesn't hold any bitterness toward Gingerich's possible early release. Lundy understands the gravity of the situation and knows that his sentence is fair. He recognizes that no matter what Paul Danner did. And I was like, you know, that's, that's, that's odd. And I figured that, you know, that was it. When he put his mind to it, he did exactly what he planned on doing. You haven't had a jumpsuit? No, I've been, I haven't wore a jumpsuit since uh, the juvenile block. Up until like six months ago, I thought I had nine years left. And it come to find out I had seven and a half. He didn't deserve to lose his life. And he wasn't justified in what he did. The remorse is admirable, considering how unfair the sentence and living conditions are. That's all for today, folks. See you next time.